Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India As we have already discussed, uh, I mean Weberian method, okay? Weber contributed heavily to the development of substantive sociological theory and to the debate on methodology. Okay? Weber's methodological writings are usually characterized as effecting a reconciliation between positivism and uh, or rather between positivist and new Kantian positions. What is this, this positivism as we have already discussed? We have discussed in the methods of science, uh, there are various tenets of positivism that, uh, that science is distinct from all areas of uh, human activity or creativity, because it possesses a method unique to it that there is only one method common to all sciences irrespective of their subject matter that is methodological monism, that the method of science is the method of induction that is inductivism, that uh, the hallmark of science lies uh, in the fact that all scientific statements are systematically verifiable that is systematic verifiability, there must be a dichotomy between fact and value. I mean, uh, facts do not have uh, uh, facts are value neutral, whereas values do not have factual content. Okay, we have we have discussed many tenets of positivism and how positivism uh, emerged as an intellectual um, activity uh, through the through different stages in the law of development of society propounded by August Comte that the, the transition which has taken place in the form of theological stage to metaphysical stage to positivistic or scientific stage. Okay. And then this is this is one part I mean supremacy of sciences over other sciences, other uh, areas of inquiry. When we come to new Kantianism, things differ. Okay. Kant in fact wrote a critique to pure reason, I mean it was a substantive argument against uh, the cognitive authority of science. Okay. Demarcation between, it was a challenge to the demarcation between science and non-science, it was uh, a challenge, a challenge, it was a challenge uh, to uh, the, the autonomy of science uh, to the cognitive authority of science. Okay. What new Kantians, what, 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 what new Kantianism reflects on is that our world, our, our knowledge of the world, our image of the world is a constructed one. Our knowledge of the world, our image of the world is partial, it is relative. And perhaps for this reason, the way we try to conceptualize the existing world is subject to selection and interpretation. That is why fact and value that uh, uh, what is a fact may not be fact later on or what is a value may not uh, remain at the level of value after a period of time. Okay. Then, if our knowledge of the world, if our image of the world is a, is a constructed one, is relatively partial, it is not a universal phenomenon, which is subject to selection and interpretation from the multifarious and multifacet, multifaceted data systems that we have. Okay. Weber tried to situate his 
methodological writings within social sciences as effecting a reconciliation between positivism on the one hand and neo kantianism on the other weber tried to locate his methodology not simply as a matter of fact the demarcation between science and non science but also as a matter of fact how science is limited in its purview how we must go beyond such uh, linear model of science okay that is what neo kantianism is about okay though weber's positions were not of course entirely consistent throughout his life it is possible to say that in general he rejected the view uh, attributable to some uh, neo kantians do not recurt that the cultural sciences are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their objects of study and that the category of causality is inapplicable in them okay the way positivists tried to look at causality explanation attributing a cause and effect relationship okay perhaps it is it mean perhaps it cannot be attributable to cultural sciences that's why there must be a difference between natural sciences and cultural sciences okay for weber weber was committed to the widespread neo kantian insistence on the methodological peculiarities of the cultural sciences then then for weber these peculiarities centered around two related concepts namely value relevance and interpretative understanding one is value relevance and the other interpretative understanding they they should not be treated in isolation they are uh, mutually influenced and any attempt to study them separately would be misleading okay as positivists argued that no there is no place of value in science science is fact based okay new kantian suggest that our knowledge of science our knowledge of the world social world okay is as it is a constructed one it also involves certain values as well as facts and those values and facts they are subject to interpretation we we tend to select certain facts we tend to select certain values okay in what sense i mean the cultural sciences differ from the natural in the distinctive role of valuations in the formation of uh, concepts and in the distinctive type of knowledge involved in them that's why if if weber's methodological and theoretical uh, writings uh, are a reconciliation between positivism and neo kantianism then a third area of weberian methodological uh, or a third area of methodological differences was thought by weber to be the use use of idealization in the cultural sciences okay that's why it is very important to know this that uh, that one is positivism the other neo kantianism within neo kantianism we we, have, we are trying to discuss value relevance interpretative understanding of social action and idealizations in the cultural sciences okay then weber's famous definition of interpretative sociology encapsulates mm, most of certain points most of the points like sociology in the sense in which this highly ambiguous word is used here is a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects then first sociology is a science in 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 the positivistic schema okay but that must move on 
move forward okay which attempts the interpretative understanding of social action which attempts the interpretative understanding of social action i mean it goes to the new kantian school of thought what does it uh, aim to do you know it aims to provide a causal explanation of its course and effects that's why when weber tried to look at sociology okay uh, uh, first of all sociology is a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects an exposition of weber's methodological position can usefully proceed with an analysis of each of the concepts and contrasts involved in the definition okay first first the concept of social action the characterization of sociology in terms of the understanding and explanation of social action involves two important contrasts before getting into this but what is that social action that we want to study okay one is traditional social action traditional social action for weber refers to the habits and customs that we generally are involved in okay if we look at traditional social action okay traditional social action includes habits and customs what is a habit a habit is something that a human being has been that an individual has been doing it for a long time usually a habit is something that an individual gets accustomed to okay habits and customs that we see they may have certain meanings but for weber they are unreflective in nature customs if i say rituals uh, practices uh, which uh, may be very unreflective in nature okay for weber traditional social action which is very much contingent upon habits and customs okay they i mean they are unreflective in nature and hence meaningless secondly affective or emotive social action if you look at affective social action is based on emotions for weber if affective social action is based on emotion then it becomes meaningless it becomes unreflective in nature then he discussed value rational social action okay it must have a it must involve certain values which are higher order norms okay they are reflective in nature and hence meaning that it involves meaningful social action but the most important social action which weber described that is goal rational social action goal oriented social action uh, or purposive social action uh, or instrumental rationality okay it is orient that that this social such social action is oriented towards attaining certain objectives attaining certain goals and so on okay then when we when we discuss this these these four types of social action uh, envisaged by weber okay the the characterization of sociology in terms of the understanding and explanation of social action if i say that explanation is a part of positivistic thought process then understanding is a part of neo kantian thought process okay then the such characterization if i if i say positivism uh, tends to arrive at explanation and neo kantianism tends to arrive at uh, understanding of social action then it they involve two important contrasts first weber is distinguishing 
the paradigmatic objects of sociological uh, knowledge for him. What are uh, I mean? What are those paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge? I mean, um, I mean, individual social actions, their meanings and causes, from the supra individual social entities, namely states, institutions, classes, cla collective consciousness, or whatever, whose existence is supposed in much sociological theorizing and also everyday thinking about social relations. Weber does not actually deny the existence of such entities, but argues that for interpretative sociology, they must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual persons. Weber's positions here would now be regarded as methodological individualist involving the claim that in so far as collectivities may be said to have characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up, those characteristics are to be explained in terms of individual actors and their actions. Okay. Then, then what is, what is met methodological, if I say methodological individualist position, uh, let us, let us go one by one. I mean, one is uh, paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge, namely individual social actions, their meanings uh, and causes. What are supra individual social entities? If individual social actions, their meanings and causes, they constitute paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge, then states, institutions, classes, collective consciousnesses, etcetera, they constitute supra individual social entities. Okay? And Weber tried to mediate the two. Okay? And the way Weber does not actually deny the existence of uh, such entities, but argues that for interpreti interpretative sociology, they must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual persons. Weber's position here would now be regarded as methodological individualist involving the claim that in so far as collectivities may be said to have characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up, those characteristics are to be explained in terms of individual actors and their subsequent actions. Then what is this methodological individualist position? Methodological individualism refers to theoretical positions holding that adequate sociological accounts necessarily involve reference to one persons, I mean individuals, second their interpretations, I mean those individuals interpretations of their circumstances, thirdly and the reasons and motives for the for the actions that they take. Then methodological individualism uh, refers to theoretical positions holding that adequate sociological accounts must make reference to individuals, their interpretations of their circumstances and the causes and motives for the actions that they take. Weber says that such action by no means necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation. Okay. Then what are classes, common class situation if I, if when, when Weber suggested? Okay. When Weber suggested common class for, for, for suppose for Marx, classes were, classes are uh, manifestations of economic differences. For Weber, class is based on life chances and causal components. Okay. And, and such interpretation involves, I mean involves uh, uh, or, or refers to a variety of forms of sociology united by an emphasis on the necessity for sociologists to grasp or understand or interpret actors meanings. Such interpretive sociology can legitimately interpret 
course of action in terms of concepts such as the state classes, class consciousness and so on without commitment to any of the entities. Moreover, interpretative understanding refers to a method that emphasizes on the importance of understanding of intentional human action, purposive social action, goal rational social action you can see this. Okay? I mean instrumental rationality. Semantically, any account is an interpretation. Weber considered understanding to be a method of elucidating the motivations for action, which did not prelude the sociologist making generalizations from this data. For Weber used the term Verstehen to, to denote understanding, it is a German word, okay. Verstehen. I mean, Weber, the way Weber considered understanding or Verstehen to be a method of elucidating uh, the motivations for action, which did not prelude the sociologist making generalizations from this data. In, in sum, in total, whilst there is a general commitment to empathy and understanding from the actor's point of view, the research that follows that, that the research that flows from interpretation is so varied as to be difficult to categorize as a school, possibly because the meaning of interpretation is itself subject to interpretation. For, for Weber, Verstehen or understanding is not a method at all, but an objective goal rational social action. I mean, if you have to understand, it must be an objective. You, you must have an objective to understand uh, a social phenomenon. Okay? Verstehen or, or goal or I mean Verstehen or understanding is not a method at all, but an objective or an achievement or a goal. It is a distinctive type of knowledge which may be achieved by a variety of methods or by no method at all. For Weber, the concept of Verstehen refers primarily to the spontaneous and immediate recognition of acts and their meanings in everyday life. Such interpretative understanding of social action, if you look at, okay, has two parts. One, interpretation of the textual and linguistic meaning of a cultural product, okay, and secondly, value interpretation, which does not involve evaluation of action or product, but involves selective conceptualization of the object in relation to some value, be it social value or aesthetic value or cognitive value. Okay? Then, if, if I say social value, aesthetic value and cognitive value, then I am I'm trying to make some selection. For Weber, selection is based on cultural relevance, we have already discussed this. Value for a sociologist is always an object of study. Weber divides interpretative understanding into two parts, namely direct understanding and indirect understanding. Direct understanding is alternatively known as observational understanding, whereas indirect understanding is alternatively known as explanatory understanding. Direct understanding is based on the interpretative understanding of action, it involves a method or a strategy that is imaginative identification primarily to be spontaneous and immediate recognition of the acts and their meanings in everyday life. And this imaginative identification is processed through rule governed strategy within a shared culture. It is possible only when both observer and observed share culture. Rule governed shared culture is based on three things, one is relevance, secondly acceptability and thirdly elegance. If observer and observed do not share culture, then observer may give a different meaning or observed uh, should get socialized into the culture that the observer wants to study. Then, then, then if I say rule governed said culture, but what is culture? Weber defines culture as the totality of real objects to which we attach 
generally acknowledged values or complexes of meaning constituted by values. Culture in addition consists of all those items produced by human beings for the sake of value ends. Okay? Uh, if you if you look at such interpretative understanding of social action vis a vis culture, because we do not interpret um, uh, a particular phenomenon independent of our cultural setup. Okay? Culture is very important when we make interpretation. That is why understanding comprises two things. One, imaginative identification that we have already discussed that imaginative identification pri is, uh, is primarily spontaneous and immediate recognition of the acts and their meanings in everyday life. Okay? Such imaginative identification is a useful uh, tool, but it is not an essential condition for meaningful social action. And recognition of the rational connection between means and ends. Okay? Such, such indirect or explanatory understanding of social action involves two things. Explanation one, explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning. Secondly, explanation must be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations. If I say explanation must be uh, adequate at the level of meaning, okay, then it follows from the new Kantian school of thought. If I say explanation must be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations, then it flows from the positivistic school of thought. Okay? They, that is why uh, uh, Mar, uh, I mean Weber said uh, indirect or explanatory understanding involves two things. One explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning. Secondly, explanation must be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations. Okay? Then, then to what extent explanation must be adequate? Such adequacy is based on generalizations and generalizations are based on experience. There is a probability that a particular action always occurs in the same way. If motives are the antecedent, then social action will be the consequent. Weber defines motive as a complex subjective meaning not objective. Motive are all motives are always subjective, because uh, your motive may be different from my motive. Right? Okay? Motives are always subjective. Weber defines motive as a complex subjective meaning which seems to the actor herself or himself or to the observer as an adequate ground for the conduct in question. Multiple motives can lead to a similar or same kind of social action. In fact, there, there are obviously today, today if we look at there are, there are many models of explanation. Uh, suppose uh, earlier Durkheim said monocausal model that is single cause, single effect model, uh, but for Weber uh, it is a multiple causes, single effect model. Okay? But now we see in the 21st century that it is always about uh, multiple causes, multiple effects model. Okay? But for Weber it was always multiple causes, single effect model, I mean multiple motives can lead to a similar or same kind of social action. Uh, I mean the the, however, the central dimensions of Weber are that economic, uh, religions, uh, I mean economic, religious, and power relations are crucial sociological explanations. Weber made three types of economic phenomena. Economic phenomena, it's it's very important in methodology uh, when we uh, methodology in social sciences uh, uh, to discuss Weber. Uh, I mean, economic, religious, and power relations are crucial sociological explanations. When we say the, he, he made three types of economic phenomena, I mean one is economic phenomena, secondly uh, economically relevant phenomena and thirdly economically conditioned phenomena. If I say if when, when Weber said economic phenomena, I mean he referred to institutions uh, deliberately created and used for economic ends. Suppose market, economically 
relevant phenomena, I mean those legal and religious phenomena uh, which are not primarily economic, but have consequences which are economic in nature in certain circumstances. Economically conditioned phenomena when we say I mean these are stratification systems and the state are not directly uh, uh, the economic phenomena, but they are affected in some way by economic phenomena. I mean the state also is directed by the market, directed by various stratificatory systems. That is why for Weber economy and religion cannot be separated in our day to day life uh, and so on. For this he, he was not referring to uh, uh, such relationship independent of the structure of uh, polity, economy and culture okay, and the kind of authority that we have. The structure of authority in Weberian schema that is the traditional authority, uh, rational legal authority and charismatic authority. Okay. He was trying to look at the structure of bureaucracy to examine the structure of authority. Okay traditional authority when Weber referred to all religious uh, institutions, but when he referred to rational legal authority, he was referring to the state, okay? the kind of present day bureaucracy that we have and charismatic authority that he was referring to was may be authority. Uh, in fact, Robert Bierstedt uh, alternatively used the term uh, leadership in, in the place of charismatic authority. That, uh, uh, if you look at charismatic authority, maybe Gandhi, maybe uh, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, and so on. Okay. Mm. Martin Luther King, okay. uh, many. But the kind of rational legal authority, which is operational, uh, it is a, it is an ideal typical bureaucratic setup okay, that uh, Weber was referring to. If we if we look at Martin's structural I mean from, from this what follows Merton's structural functional model, okay, then Merton's structural functional model and then we will discuss the kind of uh, manifest and latent functions that, uh, that is which are very much seen in the context of Merton um, that functions are observed consequences which make for the adoption or adjustment of a given system for positive consequences. When Merton was referring to dysfunction, okay, one social fact can have negative consequences for another social fact. When Merton was trying to refer to non-functions, I mean he was trying to refer to consequences that are irrelevant to the system under consideration. Okay. Then Martonian structural functional model okay, involves three types of things. One is function, second dysfunction, third non-function. Functions are those observed consequences which make for the adoption or adjustment of a given system or positive consequences dysfunction that is one social fact which can have negative consequences for another social fact and non-function refer to the consequences which are irrelevant to the system under consideration. That is why when we look at the kind of functions and consequences okay, now for, for Merton. Uh, I mean Merton always referred to manifest functions and latent functions. Manifest functions uh, are those where we see uh, both subjective dispositions and objective consequences coincide, uh, whereas uh, in the context of latent functions uh, of subjective dispositions and objective consequences do not coincide. Okay. In the context of Hopi tribe, he uh, uh, Merton looked at this in the context of um, uh, many, many uh, culturally mediated symbols, we can discuss these things. Then what have we discussed so far? We have discussed um, the Matthew effect in science, I mean as a part of inequalities in science, 
then Weberian interpretative method, okay, different types of social action, structure of authority in Weberian schema, um, which, which uh, influenced uh, structure of uh, Mertonian structural functional model, okay, and and the and he also Martin uh, reflected on manifest and latent functions uh, elaborately. Okay, uh, Martin also discussed the theories of middle range and so on, but this is not a part of this core structure. Uh, it is important to understand manifest and latent functions uh, uh, of Martin. Uh, in a in specific cultural cultural context, uh, in specific uh, cultural circumstances of science, okay. And then, from here onward, if if we say that the 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 kind of instrumental rationality, okay, uh, the kind of value rational social action, the kind of authority that we have, okay, in terms of uh, rational legal authority, traditional authority or charismatic authority or the kind of Mertonian structural functional model that we have uh, functions, dysfunctions, uh, non functions and then in terms of manifest and latent functions, I mean in manifest functions we have intended or anticipated consequences of social action. In latent functions we have unintended or unanticipated social action, so consequences of social action. Okay. From here onward, what kind of intended and unintended consequences of social action that we have, so far as the relationship between technology and politics is concerned. This is very important. 